What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Base. Huge thank you to Josh Brown over at Stolman Subaru of Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Crosstrek or any Subaru product, then I'll be sure to have Josh's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, just like usual, first, I'm going to talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Subaru Crosstrek base, and this particular one has been painted in offshore blue metallic, which here in person kind of looks like a mix of gray and blue. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2024, Subaru redesigned the Crosstrek inside and out, yet it does retain a familiar feel to the previous generation. And the unfortunate news for 2024, there is no longer a manual option with both the Impreza and the Crosstrek. But this one being the base, as standard, you get LED steering responsive headlights with automatic high beams as well as standard turn signals. And taking a step to the left, this is what the front end of the redesigned Crosstrek looks like. In my opinion, I think Subaru did a fantastic job with the redesign, making it look more muscular and just better overall. But at the center of your front end is where you will find your satin black front grille with your Subaru logo located at the center. And then coming down just a little bit, you get a satin black lower fascia with some cladding that flares in below your headlights. Very similar design language to the new Outbacks. And you may notice this area here is where your fog lights would be. However, with the base, you do not get fog lights on screen right now. I'm showing you the trim level, the lowest trim level you have to get in order to get fog lights. And then last but not least, you get 8.7 inches of ground clearance here with the base, which is very impressive because this is just a little SUV. You know, it's not like a big SUV, like a Mercedes GLE or, you know, something of that size. This is a small compact SUV with quite a bit of ground clearance, which I personally appreciate. But anyways, you can see that satin black lower fascia leads into your satin black wheel arch moldings. But, you know, this kind of mimics the WRX in the way that it has that venting here. So I show you, or I'll show you on screen what I mean by that, but you can see kind of follows form to the WRX, giving it a sporty appearance up here uh, on the side. But this one being the base, you get 17 inch gray painted wheels, and these wheels are wrapped in 22560 Yokohama Geolander G91 all season tires. I'll give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires as best that I can. And then also with the Crosstrek base as standard, you do get active torque vectoring, which kind of makes the car handle better around turns. But Anyways, one thing I thought was pretty cool is that you get three washer nozzles with the base, which I'll show you on the interior, gives you, you know, spray throughout to the entire windshield just to make sure your windshield is very clean when you do do the windshield washers. And then this one being the base, not much going on with our side mirrors. So you do get satin black side mirrors, no turn signals. Uh, and also these side view mirrors are manual folding and power adjustable. And that's kind of about it for the side view mirror. Now I'm going to take a step back and give you a little side profile shot of the base. So you may notice that you do get satin black window trim as well as satin black door handles. You do not get keyless access. And then all the way at the bottom of your passenger doors, below the passenger doors actually, you get the satin black rocker panel. And then let me give you a rear three quarter shot of the new Crosstrek. And then starting at the top, you get a satin black shark fin antenna. You get a body color roof spoiler with your integrated third brake light. You get a rear window defroster, a single speed rear wiper and standard taillights with a black bezel. And then here's a little booty shot of this thing. You can see obviously you have your Subaru logo located at the center of your hatch. And then you get chrome badging back here and a backup camera offset to the left of your Subaru logo because just beneath your Subaru logo, if you put your hand underneath here and the vehicle is unlocked, you'll feel a little pad. And if you press on that pad and pull up, that is going to open up your trunk area. So you do get a manual lift gate and you get a, quite a bit of storage space considering this is a small SUV. I'd say you get about maybe three and a half feet of storage space from about here to there. You also get a nice little pattern, mountainous pattern 
um, on your trunk opening. And then a couple options that we got going on back here. This vehicle's been optioned with the $701 Popular Package 1A, which gives you the bumper cover here and the cargo tray. So this is the cargo tray, basically a floor mat for your cargo area. And then as standard, you get these carpeted floor mats with the stitched in cross trek badging. I think that is pretty cool. And then you get a light on the driver's side of the trunk. It is a halogen light. And then you get a grocery bag hook here. You get another grocery bag hook there. You get another hook there and another hook down there as well. You get a little cup holder there, another cup holder on that side. And if you lift all of this stuff up, that is where you will find your spare tire, your tow hook, your jack, and all the necessities to either change a flat tire or get pulled out of a snow bank or some mud with that tow hook there. And then you also do get fold flat second row seats. So if you pull up on this thing right here and you throw that seat forward, you can see you get a little bit more storage space. I'd say about, you know, three and a half, maybe four feet of storage space with the second row seats down. So with the second row seats up, you can see about four feet. Whereas with this side, you say about maybe six and a half feet of storage space. And then the other option that this vehicle has uh, is the $227 cargo cover which is what this piece is here. And basically that cargo cover would go here and here, and it's basically a cover. So when you have your trunk closed, nobody can see what you got going on in your trunk. And then that's kind of about it for what we got going on in the trunk area. Now let's finish things off here at the rear end. So you do get a body color rear bumper, but at the bottom of your bumper, you get that satin black lower fascia, kind of what you get in the front. You also get a 390 rear axle ratio, a max tow capacity of 1500 pounds. And then on the passenger three quarter panel back here is where you'll find your fuel door and 87 octane will do you just fine here with the cross trek base. Now I'm going to give you a little 360 walk around. I'd say maybe this is more like a 180 degree walk around of the new cross trek. Let me know what your opinions are on the design language of the cross trek, even the cross trek base in the comment section down below. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Pop and open that hood reveals the two liter naturally aspirated boxer four cylinder that makes 152 horsepower and 145 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a linear Tronic CVT for a zero to 60 time in 9.1 seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 27 miles per gallon in the city, 34 miles per gallon on the highway for 29 miles per gallon combined with standard all wheel drive. So I know this thing isn't the quickest, but it does make up for it with its fuel economy. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything from the video thus far, please like, comment, and subscribe. That just helps me get one step closer to my dreams. So I'd appreciate it if you do that. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, you do not get keyless access, but you do get this point and stick key with your unlock function, your lock function, your trunk pop function, and your panic function. So pressing the unlock function, let's take a look at what the interior of the base has to offer. So you can only spec the base with the gray cloth interior. So this is what it looks like. You also get a manually adjustable driver's seat and a manually adjustable front passenger seat, but we'll get into that here in a second because we're gonna start with the door panel here on the driver's side. So all of this, you get some gray cloth, then you get some vinyl wrapping, some faux carbon fiber trim. You have your power side view mirror controls right here. You're unlocking your lock functions. You get automatic up and down windows in the front, but you do not get automatic up or down windows in the back. Pressing on this is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. And then you get a spot right here. You could set your phone. I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max and you can see it fits in there, no problem. Then you get a padded armrest, a little bit of storage space, a spot you could set a water bottle and a speaker. The base, by the way, comes with four speakers. And this is what these front seats look like. The first thing I wanted to say is that I don't understand why Subaru got rid of the adjustable headrests that come like forwards and backwards. They still do go up and down, obviously, but they don't go forwards and backwards like they did on the previous gen, which I think is a mistake. But stepping on into the interior of the base, let's take a look at what this thing sounds like when you close the door. That is what it sounds like. And now let's fire this thing up. Remember, point and stick key, 
Put it in the ignition and turn. And that is what it sounds like when you fire it up from the driver's perspective. Now, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you throughout the entire interior here of the base, starting down here. So this scroll knob is to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. And then one thing that is nice with the base is that if you flip that down, that gives you access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So you can bring the steering wheel towards you. You can push the steering wheel away from you and it also moves up and down. And then all you gotta do is lock it right back into position. And now let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. And not only is this your turn signal control stock, it is also your headlight control stock. So right now that is in the headlights always on position. That is the parking lights on position. That is headlights automatic. And then all the way down is headlights in the off position. And then zooming back out, you get a vinyl wrapped wheel. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to it. That is what the horn sounds like. Now, going over the controls on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, that is to go backwards on a track, that is to go forwards on a track, and that is gonna switch you between your different audio sources like AM, FM, Bluetooth audio, USB music, auxiliary jack, etc. And then you get these up in the, or the, up in the down arrow, and that is to control your 4.2 inch productivity screen located at the center of your gauge cluster. I'll get into that here in a second. But this is to pick up on a phone call, this is to mute the audio system, as well as hang up on a phone call, this is to speak to the vehicle. Here are your volume controls. And then coming over to this side of the steering wheel, as standard with the cross track, you get Subaru EyeSight, which gives you adaptive cruise control with lane centering. So here are your adaptive cruise control settings. And then you also do get SI Drive. So this is basically like your sport and your intelligent drive modes. Right now that's intelligent. That is your sport mode and it lets you know what mode you are on uh, up top there. So basically right now, let you know that you're in sport. If I press I, it's gonna let you know that you're in intelligent mode. And now obviously that is your windshield wiper control stock. And as promised, you see the three nozzles spray the entire windshield, which is definitely nice. And then moving into our gauge cluster on the left-hand side, tachometer, cool and temperature gauge on the right hand side you get your speedometer and your fuel gauge up top here on the top of your 4.2 inch productivity screen you have your instant fuel economy stuff um, so basically let's say we're coasting down a hill this is going to come to this side and it's going to go towards that plus basically signifying that we're getting good fuel economy but if i floored it it's going to go all the way back like it is now letting me know that we're getting bad fuel economy so right now this is like analytical data for your trip b information then that is your fuel range that is the digital speedometer readout up top 12.5 trip b information where it says 12 flat that is your odometer then intelligent drive mode transmission status stuff auto stop start stuff and moving throughout this screen you have these controls here so if i flip that down you can see now it's some more analytical data and the fuel range then is some more analytical data stuff this is basically when you turn the vehicle off with the auto stop start system like when you come to a stop the vehicle turns off it counts how long the vehicle has been off for and how much fuel it has saved with the auto stop start system and then you got your tire pressure stuff you have to be moving in order to read or have it read the tire pressures then you have your audio stuff uh, the ambient exterior temperature in the current time so that is basically the screen that i would leave it on if this was my vehicle and then you can see down here again the trip b information stuff you can see this trip reset button right here if i press and hold on that the 12.5 will reset back down to zero and then coming over to here, this is kind of interesting looking, right? So these are your dual seven inch multimedia displays. The top display gives you wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto connectivity. It is not wireless. And then going throughout the physical controls, obviously you have your hazard button, your volume control button. If you press and hold on that, that is going to turn the screen off. However, if I press and hold on that again, it is going to you know let the screen live and then if i press that that is going to mute the audio system 
you got your front defroster stuff, your temperature controls for the driver, you get temperature controls for the passenger, so you do get a dual zone climate control system as standard. And then this is to turn the rear defroster on. This is your tuning control knob, and if you press and hold on the tuning control knob, it's gonna bring you into your sound settings, like your mid, your bass, your treble, your balance fader, your vocal image control, and that is what that does if you press and hold on that. So I'm gonna just back X back out of that, go into my home screen, and I'm gonna peel this off and we're going to get access into all the buttons so again this is your top seven inch screen then you have these physical controls to bring you into your radio stuff media stuff these are all of your different shortcut buttons so if i go into radio pops up radio media is like your bluetooth audio usb stuff then you get your home button your phone stuff and your different apps and i'm going to x back out of that so this is your screen you get your temperature the uh, current time this is like your phone connectivity to cellular and the battery this is one of your screens this is the secondary screen you can turn it off you can go into valet mode you can go in between your different settings here so you get your general settings your sound settings your phone settings I don't really feel like I need to spend too much time with this screen it's very basic very easy to use I don't feel like you need any explanations with that but on the lower portion of the screen you have your X mode X mode is basically just like a fancy traction control system essentially for those who don't really want to get technical uh, and then you have your vehicle control so you can go into here you can turn your traction control stuff off you get your cruise control acceleration auto vehicle hold is whether you uh, you want the vehicle like if you have that on and you turn the auto vehicle hold on the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system and then the steering responsive headlights are when you turn the steering wheel to this way the headlights are also going to move that way and if you turn the steering wheel that way the headlights are going to move that way so you can turn the steering responsive headlights off right there now a couple other things you can turn the auto stop start system uh, on or off with that you can go into your driver assistance stuff like your pre-collision braking system your lane departure stuff and then also again you get dual zone automatic climate control if you want the climate control to take up this entire lower screen you would click right here and then you can see all of your different climate controls throughout that so this part of the screen is always going to be on um, so you can control the temperature stuff the AC stuff and then obviously you get the physical controls for the temperature and then down here you get a USB a port an auxiliary jack a little bit of storage space down here you could set a phone or something like that and then you have your gear shifter you go and drive flip that to the left that is uh, your low low mode go back into park you get an electronic parking brake you get two cup holders here you get a 12 volt power outlet with a little bit of storage space down in here you could also sit a phone then you get a okay padded armrest and if you open up that armrest no there is no connectivity down in there but i would say you know that's probably a foot maybe like 10 inches uh, of storage space down in that center console so actually quite a bit of storage space in the center console uh, greater storage space in this center console than the outback onyx edition xt i just did a video with again manually adjustable front passenger seat you get some faux carbon fiber trim you do not get a lockable lower glove box but you get a decent amount of storage space in the glove box and then again, this one has been optioned with the $701 popular package 1A, which gives you the mirror compass with your home link. As you can see, auto dimming rear view mirror, you get your compass and then your home link is your universal garage door opener. You can open up three garage bays with those buttons there. Then up top here, it lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. Your reading lights are both halogen. And then this is if you flip that to the right, when you open up the doors, the interior lights will not turn on. But if you flip this to the left, when you open up the doors, the interior lights will turn on. And then come to our visor, you get this little thing right here. You could set any like sort of paper product. And then if you open that up, you get a vanity mirror, but you do not get any vanity lights. And then the visor itself does not slide, but you get this piece that is a sliding out piece. Oh, poop handle. And then this is the same. You get the vanity mirror, but you do not get the vanity lights. And then the passenger also gets an Opu panel up top there as well. And then the seats, seeking of speed, seat 
comfort. Um, I think these seats are very comfortable. I think even if you're a bigger person, you'd still be very comfortable uh, in these seats. Now, I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at everything that you get as standard, um, the couple options that this has, but basically I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Crosstrek base is spec'd is $27,863. I think that's a pretty good value. You know, this thing gives you everything that you need. It's, it doesn't give you any like super fancy stuff, but it's got everything that you need. It's got the uh, Apple CarPlay stuff, wired Apple CarPlay. So again, not fancy, but it gives you what you need and it gives you what you need at a fair price. You know, a vehicle like this at an, another manufacturer might be like, you know, 29, maybe 30 grand. So pretty good value here. But I do want to show you what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. So let's see how far these windows go down. Okay, they go all the way down. Then you get a spot you could set your phone. You get a decently padded armrest, a little bit of storage space, a spot you could set your water bottle and a speaker. This is what your second row seats look like. I'm going to basically lift this thing up and just put it on my self or actually you know what i'm gonna go move it like that so up top here opu panel a spot you can set your dry cleaning no seat back pocket behind the driver's seat but you do get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat there is no connectivity back here same stuff on that side you got your dome light up top there you do not get a center fold down armrest and when it comes to leg and knee room i'm five foot nine i'm adjusted behind myself I've actually got quite a bit of knee and leg room here, more than I would expect uh, in a little SUV like this. And then when it comes to headroom, I say I've got about probably two, two and a half to three inches of headroom. So you can actually use this as a family vehicle, even if you have two kids and you're the husband and the wife or whatever you are, you are going to be comfortable with four people in your family with this little SUV and it comes at a good value. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat all right now on to the driving portion of the video where i always start my videos here i go over the speed bumps at five miles an hour and then rate them on a scale of one to ten that was kind of five low end torque it's okay all right now five miles an hour let's see if i can't get it this time I'm gonna give this thing an eight flat on a scale of one to 10. It did very well over those speed bumps. I didn't feel like the suspension was too firm. Now when it comes to body roll, there is a little bit of body roll, um, but you know, that's to be expected. This thing cruises very nicely uh, over bumps and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna do a nice little acceleration for you here. you want that power you got to wind it out because once you get higher up into the rpms that's where you start getting into the power and that's where it starts to pull a little bit because at the lower rpms it doesn't pull like super hard but you know if you're somebody who is just looking for a nice little suv that's affordable that's efficient maybe not super fast because you don't really care about that the cross track honestly is really good for that because you know, it's not super fast, but it is efficient and it comes with all wheel drive as standard. So that is a big selling point for a lot of people is the efficiency and the fact that it comes with all wheel drive as standard. So again, you know, this isn't the fanciest cross track, you know, it's the base model. And you know, with that, you don't get all the niceties that you would get even with the premium, let's say, or the limited, obviously, you know what I mean? Those are, you're paying more for those, but this is gonna give you everything that you need at a more affordable price. It just is, you know, you're gonna skip out on the frills. You know what I'm saying? That Miata's kinda cool. You're gonna skip out on the frills. You know, you're not gonna get the fancy sound system. You're not gonna get the premium looks on the exterior. You can see you're gonna get quite a bit of satin black on the exterior whereas you know with the premium for example that's when you start getting like the body color door handles so here's another little acceleration for you it's normal the 
So, you know, the premium is going to give you the body color door handles. I also believe the premium will give you keyless access, or you might have to get a trim level to get keyless access, but I'm pretty sure that the uh, premium does give you that keyless access. But again, that's going to cost more money. And if your, you know, budget's like $27,000, well, this is where you might end up, you know, and it's not a bad place to be. You still get adaptive cruise control with the lane centering and everything else that you get with the uh, Subaru EyeSight suite of features, which I'll put on screen right now for you to take a look at everything you get with Subaru EyeSight. So, you know, adaptive cruise control as standard on the base model, I think that's pretty awesome, you know, and you know, you might not get the blind spot monitoring, but you're going to have to pay for that. You know, you're going to have to get the, you're going to have to get the premium in order to get the blind spot monitoring. But now take a listen to what this thing sounds like cruising at about 50 miles an hour going over some bridge joints. So here you go. And this could totally just be me, but I do believe that Subaru added some additional sound deadening to the new gen Crosstrek and Impreza. I've noticed it with both the Crosstrek and the Impreza that they just sound much better insulated road noise wise, wind noise wise than the last generation. Um, you know, that's something big that you notice if you do a lot of highway driving is the road and the wind noise and they've definitely added some more sound deadening at least from what i've noticed because they sound more you know premium uh, from the interior's perspective but no for real they actually do sound like they got some more sound deadening that f-type jaguar looks pretty darn sweet right there um so again you know it's not going to blow your socks off when it comes to the power but it is going to be efficient the standard sound system is pretty decent um you know what can you expect out of a four speaker sound system but it will get the job done and it doesn't sound awful it doesn't sound great it's actually a, i'd say it's a good sound system you know it's not great but you know it gets the job done and you know you're on a budget i don't think that you really care about all of this stuff if you're on a budget you're looking for something that's brand new it's got a warranty it's got good fuel economy it's going to be reliable and it's going to get you from point A to point B at a low cost, whether it be you pay it in cash or, you know, monthly, your monthly premium is going to be low because it's a more affordable vehicle. So I think this thing gives you everything that you need. It's comfortable. It still looks pretty good from the exterior's perspective. Power wise, not the quickest. Um, sound system wise, pretty decent. But it's still going to give you adaptive cruise control. You're just not going to get all the frills that you would get if you stepped up to a higher trim level. So, you know, if you're looking at one of these, you're like, oh, man, should I get the base or should I just get the premium? If it were me, what I would do is go out and take a look at both side by side. Take a test drive in one. Take a test drive in the next one. You're really not going to feel that much of a difference between the two that the way that they drive. Really, it all comes down to, you know, the features and stuff like that. And if you're willing to pay for the features, well, then step up a trim level. But uh, if you're on a budget, stay with the base. I think you'll be happy. But one more thing before we end out today's video at this light, once it turns green, basically, I'm going to do a full throttle acceleration to the left and you're going to be able to experience what this thing is like when you put the pedal to the metal. All right, once I get straightened out, basically all I'm gonna do is put the pedal to the metal and we're floored. Again, not the quickest thing in the world, but that's what you'd expect out of a two liter four cylinder that makes just about 150 some horsepower but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot reach my goal without your support so if you enjoyed the video if you learned anything from the video please just take a second to like comment and subscribe i would really appreciate it looks very good for my channel in the youtube algorithm and it brings me one step closer to achieving my dream so i'd appreciate it if you do that stuff but again that is it for today's video i will catch you all in the next one peace